Hello guys and welcome to a little look at Hello guys and welcome to Shadow of War, the sequel to Shadow of Mordor. Here's some developer gameplay taken from E3. Very exciting, looks absolutely awesome. I cannot wait for it. I think it delayed until I think August. So it's coming out this year. It's coming out quite soon. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. Leave a like on this video and go ahead and enjoy the gameplay. Things that made Shadow of Mordor so cool and so award-winning was its nemesis system. And what we've done with this game is we've taken that up a notch. And what, for those of you who don't know, the nemesis system means that every orc you interact with changes based on those interactions. And that it's a living, breathing society of orcs that over time can adapt and change to how you've interacted with them. And one of the big things we've done in Shadow of War is we've made it so not only do the orcs change, but so does the environment. So let's jump into the bleeding heart the bleeding, the beating heart. It's also bleeding, they're full of blood. Uh, the army screen. And the goal today, Ellie's goal today, is to take out that guy at the top. He is the overlord, and there you go, he is bleeding. Actually, that's our blood. That's human blood, because orc blood is black. Uh, this is Asgang the cannibal. Apparently now I know where he gets his blood from. He is the overlord and the ruler of this region and he has built an army to help defend his fortress. Each of these war chiefs, we're gonna have to get through in order to get to him and take him down and take this fortress for our own. Luckily, we've spent a bunch of time with the new ring and we've identified a number of Uruks and then dominated them and brought them over into our army. Each of the Uruks with the blue skulls above their head are members of our army and we can pick and choose which ones we want to bring into battle with us as we try to take down this fortress. So let's do, uh, let's go do the fort assault. Oh, he looks good. This is the siege upgrade screen. From this screen, you can set up who you want to bring in for this fight, and more importantly, you can see who you are fighting against. So on the left hand side is your army and your war chiefs, and on the right hand side is Asgang, the cannibal's army, and all of his war chiefs. And Asgang and each of his war chiefs bring an augment or an upgrade to the fortress. In this case, Asgang has brought stone walls, which don't burn and are harder to break. Another one of his war chiefs has bought iron gates. We can't blow these up, they're, they're impossible to get through, we're gonna have to go around them. His third war chief has brought defenders, so his army will be more full of those shield guys that if you played the first game, they're a pain in the butt, and now there's gonna be a lot of them. And finally, these are the siege beasts. These are the artillery that are on each of these gates that we're gonna have to deal with. Luckily, well, actually, we've got an open slot, so that's cool. So what we can do, because we had an open slot, is we can go through our guys and try to pick one that actually fits what we're trying to do here. In this case, She's picked Two-Horn the Golden. He's a poisonous marauder commander, and with him, he's gonna bring war drives. Cool. The next war chief is gonna bring our own Siege Beast artillery. We're gonna augment our army with hunters. Those are the spear-throwing guys from the original game. And finally, we're gonna add a bunch of Olag Highs to help us bring down those walls. So we know what we're trying to get into. We have an idea of who we're bringing. Let's do it. Does not scare us. Not one traitor will pass these walls, except as a corpse to be stripped for meat and trophies. We both have much to gain. If you win, your prize is this mighty fortress. If we win, our prize shall be every living traitor we haul into our torture chambers. The lad's already, master. Just say the word. Anybody who tries that hard to scare you 
He's terrified. So we've got our army, and we're ready to take on the fortress. So Ellie can approach this however she wants. The RAI will go and do their specific goal of trying to take down the walls, go over the walls. Ellie will try to support them. The goal is to try to get as many of them into the fortress as possible and to take the victory points. Our war chiefs are already in there taking care of their war chiefs. That's great, thanks, Mozu. Killed by friends. One of the major upgrades we've done with Shadow of War we, is we've added a complete gear and loot system. So each Uruk who dies, whether they're a captain, a war chief, or an overlord, will drop a piece of gear. And that gear is based on their level and their interaction with you. In this case, Mog the Biter dropped a rune for our ring, which adds maximum, which adds a nine maximum to our focus. That's our slow mo meter. On, on top of that, each each ring that's epic or higher will let you get an unlock challenge or multiple unlock challenges, which make them even stronger. So this guy was broken because of the poison. One of the things that the new ring allows us to do is to dominate him. And when you're in the open world, this is actually how you build your army. You can identify the Uruks you want to fight based on their traits and their strengths, and then bring them over to your side. In this case, you will serve the bright lord. because we're early on, uh, yes, we've recruited master. him. And we can have him stay and fight for us, covered in poison. That'll wear off in a minute. So we've captured the first victory point. Our army will move on to the second one. We can go support them. <laughs> we can summon a Karagor who has a little dinner. They're super agile. They move pretty quickly through the environment. Plus mounted combat with the clay. Says the great serpent, you're scaring him, not killing him. That's the war chief we need to take out for this victory. One of our war chiefs is down and bleeding out. By saving him, he'll remember that, and that'll be a part of his decision making process in the future. So we've taken the 
second picture point. We're going to help up some of our guys here. And then head to the third picture point. But first we're going to recharge a bit. One of the powers that the ring gives us is the ability to drain the life from an orc and use it for ourselves. So by him being terrified of burning, he immediately went into a state that should allow us to there go. It opens up the inner keep. <laughs> All of our war chiefs are bleeding out. That took a lot out of our army, that's for sure. I am great for I won't forget this boss. We just upped a bunch of loyalty with our guys. That's going to be pretty awesome later on in the game. So each Overlord layer is going to be unique to the Overlord because of the Nemesis system. They had to make their way up through the ranks of Uryx, and in order to do that, it's changed who they are. And all of that interaction means that every time you play it, it's going to be different. Each of these mini boss battles will be unique to your playthrough. for attacking it. I swear this as a true warrior and servant of Southron. Today you will serve him by dying for him. He's a war caller. So basically, blowing his horn has brought more troops in and has buffed his troops. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this is Elden Ring. She's up her meter that allowed her to unlock this skill. It does a ton of damage and makes people very frightened. So by defeating the Overlord, we have taken over his fortress, and this region of Mordor is now ours. Nobody ever cleaned the blood off the face. It's too bad. The end is within our grasp. We have shown the Dark Lord our strength. We have taught him the folly of challenging us. Now he knows that the Bright Lord and his army will not be stopped. Mordor will soon be ours. this region from Sauron. It is now blue on the Mordor map. It's not going to make Sauron happy. However, we also get some, some upgrades. We get a little Mirian, we get a little XP, and then all of the loot that was dropped, we get. In the meantime, though, we're going to have to set up the defenses on this fort because Sauron's going to want to take it back. And he is basically going to send a bunch of troops to do what we just did to us. So in order to defend it, we want to put one of our war chiefs in as the Overlord. And each of these war chiefs will change how the region reacts. The types of missions in the region, the types of loot in the region. So based on their tribe, things are gonna change in the region. Are you gonna do the machine guy? Sweet. We're gonna switch this region over to a machine region. So that's Muzu. He's leveled up, and he is now the new Overlord of this region. We've had a couple more of our captains promoted to war chief. And now we have a machine region. It is ours. From here, Ellie can go explore the region and find all of that cool new stuff that was opened up by making it ours, and then work on our defenses. But for you guys, this is where the demo ends. We appreciate you guys coming out, and thank you very much, and hope that your E3 is awesome for the rest of it. Thanks, Ellie.